I want to start off first and foremost. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. And I want to give another double honors to uh, the elders and apostles and great millstones. <clears throat> and to all the Akim out there doing the work in sincerity and in truth. So right now, I've been, just been sitting here pondering, thinking, um, just a, a, a lesson that I need to really get on. <clears throat> and lately, what we've been seeing, basically in the news, if, I mean, if you've been really watching, if you've really been looking, you will see that the Most High is about to visit the world, that which, we, uh, which uh, he made. So now, we see... The things going on with Iran, the things with with the economy is starting to crash. You can look at the uh, the different banks over there in Europe; they're starting to fall. You can look at China. You can look at the stock market. Everything everything's getting ready to fall down at at any moment. We just had the earthquake uh, on Fourth of July over there in, in California, seven point one magnitude. The Most High is about to rip this place up, man. And the people that he's going to rip up is going to be two-thirds of our people. Our people are not listening. They can't see the signs. They can't even... They, they, can, they can be able to see when the rain is about to come, when the storm is getting ready to uh, come on uh, onto the earth. But now, they can't even see the, uh, the actual things, the spiritual things. They're so blind. So therefore, <clears throat> they're so caught up in this society and in, and, and, um, in this world... They love it so much, they love it dearly, that they even forsake the word of the Most High. So we're going to go ahead and get into some scriptures. We're going to start in Romans. Uh, let's go to verse 20. So this is going to be Romans 1 and 20. <coughs> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The two thirds of our people are without excuse. They can't say that, oh no, there is no God, there is no power. That's that that book ain't about us. And the Most High is representing it so clearly to you so plain upon the tables he has his men out there on the streets on the highways and the byways you can get on youtube you can see all the different videos getting uploaded throughout uh all all day each and every second of the day you see a video popping up and this is when the great awakening is getting ready to happen this is prophecy and they still cannot see it so when this verse, when it says the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, things that are clearly seen is you got the sun, you got the moon. They have their rotations when they come up and when they come down. The air that you breathe, the elements in, in the earth, the food. It's letting you know that this has to be a higher power. Something that had to, had to create you. And for someone to say that there is no God, that's a fool. That is a fool. <coughs> so they can't even see, they can't even discern the eternal power of the Most High. Let's go to verse 21. Because that, when they knew the Most High, they glorified Him not as the Most High. Let's just read it verbatim. Verse 21 again. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Our people, two-thirds of our people are very foolish, sottish children, as it says, as it is written. Wow. Our people, the two-thirds, they have so much vain imaginations. They think that the white man wrote the Bible. They think that, um, Salah, you got a lost train of thought. They believe that, uh, they basically give Esau, this, 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 this devil, this white man, they believe that he, he, he controls everything. They fear this man more than they fear the Most High. The foolish heart was darkened. 
they didn't they believe they believe that the book is not about them but the book is clearly talking about them through the prophecies which many of the prophecies haven't even happened yet let's go to verse 22 professing themselves to be wise they became fools so them professing themselves to be wise is them digging and dabbling to all these different philosophies out here in the world. They're going into Islam. Uh, they they want to read the Quran. They 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 uh they want to worship Shiva, Buddha. I mean, man, all all these different thousands of gods that are out here that are just made up. All all the all the idol all the um the gods of the nations are just idols. This is idolatry. They worship this damn, this Jesus Christ, this white, this white man. They don't even know the true name of, of the Messiah. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So because they believe in all those different doctrines and philosophies out there in the world, all these different gods, they became fools. And you can see our people today, they are fools. The two-thirds of our people are fools. All the thing they want to do is just party, drink, have sex, turn up, twerk. The women is just out of control. Everything is out of order. They, they are foolish. Verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to an corruptible man. Who is that? Who is that man that they made into? Caesar Borgia. Christ. White Jesus, sweet Jesus. That's who they made God into, into that white man. They saying that Jesus is God. What? Come on, man. The scriptures uh, plainly tell you that he's the son of God. And to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. So they changed our, they changed the most high into the things that they see upon this earth. A carnal mind. As it says in Romans 8, a carnal mind is enmity against uh, God, to, uh, the Most High. And let's go here. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4. Let me show you something. We're going to start at verse 13. <coughs> and he declared unto you his covenant. Uh, this is the time when uh, Moses uh, was uh, speaking. See, there goes another upload. Verse 13. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Verse 14. And the Lord, Yahweh, commanded me <clears throat> at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land, whether ye go over to possess it. Verse 15, take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of the similitude on the day that the Lord Yahweh spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. So this is the time when they were getting ready, uh, when, uh, when Moses took the people of Israel out of, the, uh, out, of, out of Egypt and walked them over and getting ready to go into the promised land. But they were in the wilderness at that time. All right. And this is Moses basically reiterating what was going on. Verse 16. Lest ye corrupt. Because uh, this is Moses still talking to the children of Israel. So like you. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure. The likeness or of. So, so like you, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. Verse 18, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. 
And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord Yahweh thy power hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Mm. So all the rest of the so now let's get this into perspective now. This is all the other nations. This is why they have so many different gods out there. They worship so many things. They have a thousand gods. It's well over a thousand. It's a lot. It can be millions. Anything that is on this earth, the people worship. Why? Because they have no power. They have no God. Those are their gods. The things that are upon the earth. All the things that I eat, the moon, the stars, come on. They worship fish. They worship things that creep on the ground. These are what these nations worship. And the most high divided that unto all the nations under the whole heaven. But unto you, Israel, verse 20, this is for you. This is the point. But the Lord, Yahweh, have Taken you, the children of Israel, <coughs> and brought you forth out of the iron furnace to where you was made to work, slave for the Egyptians at that time, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. So are you all, all the way until this time to where I'm speaking? You are the Lord's people. You are his inheritance. I'm going to go through the round of seven and six. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Let me go ahead and get one more cut. Maybe a couple more. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel <coughs> and that I am the Lord Yahweh, your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. One more. We're going to go to Amos. I got I to gotta drive this point down to the two thirds and they still won't even hear it. Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord, Yahweh, have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, so now, he's, he's talking to the children of Israel. He's saying, I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. I didn't bring no other nation out of Egypt. I left the Egyptians where they were. Anyone, I left them. Verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So this is the most high. He, he's saying, man, I'm, I'm going to punish you. I, I gave you the tables of stone. I gave you the, the, uh, the judgments. I gave you the statutes, the law. I gave everything to you. You made the covenant with me and with Moses. It was you. So it's just like you signed blood over to the most high. You just either you do it or you don't. If you do it, your life is saved. If you don't want to do it, the only way you're going to get out of it is death. You're going to have to die. And you two thirds, you loathe his law. So therefore, the most high got something coming for you. So let's go to Proverbs. You're gonna start. It's like one of my favorite ones that I get on Jake about. Proverbs 1 and 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? 
and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. This is it's talking about the two thirds, man. You fools, man. You hate knowledge. You love to be simple. You love to have the simplicity of life. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, but don't be simple in mind. Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will make I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. What that verse is talking about. When you see the brothers out there on the on the street, or uh, if you see a video you come across, if you see different um probably different memes on the internet, you're gonna come across something with the Israelites. This is how uh, the Most High is pouring out His Spirit. He's pouring out His Spirit upon the earth. It's everywhere. It's coming through the prophets. It's on the internet. It's word of mouth. It's, it's getting the, the truth is coming out. So the Father is saying, turn. Turn away from your evil deeds and come back to my laws, statutes, and commandments that I gave you. Verse 24. Because I have called... And ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regardeth. The Most High has poured his spirit out. He's got brothers dreaming of dreams. Um, I mean, Salakia. Uh, dreams are just coming out. Salakia. They have the brothers and sisters that uh, they're dreaming dreams. You got the prophets that are out on the street. They're giving the word out. You look on the internet, the memes. You look You look on YouTube, all different type of videos. Just earlier, a YouTube, a brother just posted up a, um, a video. Right now, I'm doing a video. Right? I'm sure you probably got a brother out there on the street probably prophesying right now. He's making known his words right now. He's giving warning. Verse 24, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regardeth. Meaning the two thirds, man, y'all don't regard it, man. You don't care. The two thirds don't care. Verse 25, but ye have set at not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. Verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So the Most High said, right now, you can walk around, you can be foolish, you can, you, you can do all the things, whatever you want to do, be out there, be worldly. Just know, when the calamity comes, I'm going to laugh, I'm going to mock you at that time, because you mock my prophets. Verse 27. When you when your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress <clears throat> when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. That's the doors closing on you. That's the doors closing. It's gonna be too late in that time. Amos 8 and 11, it's going to be too, it's, it's going to be a famine. You're not going to be able to find nothing. You're not going to be able to get to Yahweh. He's going to shut the doors of mercy. It's going to be closed in that time. Verse 29, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the most high Yahweh. Verse 30. 30. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Mm. So if you're out there, you want to do sodomy. You, you uh, sodomy. You want a man, you want to be with another man or you're a woman, you want to be with another woman. The Most High said, okay, I'm going to leave you to that. I gave you a law stating that you shall be killed. And you don't do it. Guess what? That's your judgment. You're going to eat of that. You're going to eat of the fruit of your own way. Everything that's contrary to the, the uh, contrary to the doctrine of life. You will die the death. Um, let's go. Let's go back to uh, Romans. I didn't finish it. Twenty-four. 
Wherefore, the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness. That's the spirit. That's, re- <laughs> That's the spirit. Let's go back to 24. Wherefore, the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Woo! 25. Who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who was blessed forever? Amen. So now, who is that? Everyone worships Esau. Whatever Esau says, everyone does. They worship the uh, creature more than the Creator. Verse 26. For this cause, the Most High gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It's against nature for, for sodomy. You're messing up the, the Most High's creation now. You're making confusion now. So now you're making confusion. You have to just put it to death. Or else you're going to defile You're gonna defile everything else. Such as so that you see today. Everything is, is, is just out of order. Verse 27. And likewise also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman. Burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, the Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. It's not convenient for you to be with a man, a man and a man, or a woman with a woman. It's nothing convenient. He turned you over. He rejected you. He let you do whatever you need to do. If you're cheating on your man, you uh, committed adultery, the most high, he's giving you laws for you to be with just this one man. But you want to go off and be with another man? Guess what? Your punishment is death. Verse 28. Uh, I think I just read that. Verse 29, Salakia. We're going to read 28 again. I need to get that into the two-thirds heads. And even as they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, the Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind. Meaning you can't even discern good from the, uh, you couldn't even, basically couldn't even uh, discern the good. You think you're doing everything good, but really you, you so, you so in wickedness, you can't even see that you, uh, that you're not doing good. To do those things which are not convenient. It's not convenient for you to do those things. Verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, most of our people, come on, two-thirds, boasters, inventors of evil things. That means their thoughts in their mind is continually evil. Disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Our people, man, I step on one of my, I can step on one of a two-thirds foot. They are ready to blow my head off because... I missed and stepped on another foot. But guess what? The white man can go ahead and step on it and say, I'm sorry. He'll let him walk through. They're unmerciful against their own people. This is why the most I got to put them to death, man. I don't feel sorry for them, man. We're trying to tell them. We're going throughout the streets. And we're going in the streets. We, we got the signs up. I mean... The Most High Spirit is poured all around the earth, but they still can't hear it. They still can't see it. Yeah, man, I got a couple more scriptures coming for you, man. Coming for them, man. 
The two thirds, man, they gotta go, man. They, they, they gotta go. They hold. They really holding everything back. Verse thirty-two. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They have pleasure in doing those things. They have pleasure of being full of envy. They have pleasure. They love to murder their own brother. They hate the most high. They despise their proud boasters. This is two thirds of the uh, of um of Israel. Destroy. Hosea 4 and 6. They are destroyed for a lack of nothing. Let's go to that. Let's go to it. 